Welcome to the Positive Touch, the official matchroom video on how to play the game of snooker. The eight matchroom professionals will be showing you different aspects of the game, from advanced positional play right down to amateur level of basic technique. The idea of the video is to improve your game and help you get more fun and enjoyment from it through playing better. And what better place to start than by choosing your own cue? This is my cue. What can I say about it? It's made of wood, one end's thick, the other end's thin. That basically is all a cue is. Other than that, you have lots of different variations of cues. You have different makes of wood, different types of wood, different size butt, different size tips, the one piece, the two piece, the two piece further down the cue. You have um, different balances and different weights. These really are individual preferences and it's down to you as an individual yourself to go into a shop and keep on picking up different cues, see what suits your hand and also what you think feels nice in your hand. That really is what it's all about. The reason why you pick your own cue and stay with it and look after it is because you get to know your cue. It becomes part of you and every time you pick it up, even blindfolded, you can actually say, that's, that's my cue and pick them out of about three or four cues on the table. So a very important thing, not only to get, get your own cue, look after it. Don't lean it up against the wall, put it in a case every time you stop playing with it, and generally just look after the wood. You don't want to ruin it. My cue is now about 40 years old, and if you look after it, one cue can last you a lifetime. Of course, the most important part probably of a cue is um, the tip, and this is uh, the part that hits the ball. Tips are made of leather. There are different makes of tips. Once again, individual preference. But um, the most important thing is it's stuck on very well. Prepare both surfaces of the cue, make the cue flat on the top and the tip flat, and make sure you do a good job of sticking the, the tip on. But after you've done that, you must then perhaps file the tip down in a downward fashion to stop the tip from coming away from the glue, and file the tip down in that way to get the shape of perhaps the ball even, so that when the ball touches where the tip touches the ball, you've actually got contact and there's a lot of area of the tip touching the ball. Chalking the tip, another thing, don't grind the chalk into the tip like that. Two things happen there, you can wear the chalk out quicker, you also wear the tip out quicker. And uh, just brush the chalk across the top. If you see the, see the top professionals, they just go brushing across the top. And the game, even though cues haven't advanced too much, they're still made of wood, the game is now advancing in other ways. Um, we now have uh, lep chalk, which has um, got uh, anti-static ingredient in that stops the chalk from actually sticking on the balls and um, interfering with the ball contact between each other. So there are advances in the game. But the most important thing of all is look after your cue, and I think it will look after you. We now come to the first section of the video, which is basic techniques those things you do before you actually hit the white ball, like how to stand, how to hold the cue, how to make a bridge. These are, effectively, the most important points of being a snooker player, whether professional or amateur. If you're an amateur player, you won't get the benefit out of playing possibly two times a week if your basic technique is very weak. What Terry Griffiths does in this next section is to show you the best possible way of standing and holding the cue so that it gives you the most chance to make the most of your own natural ability. Well, before you start to play a game of snooker, it would obviously be a help if you can understand some of the, uh, the basic things that help you to become a better player in later years and, uh, of course, help you to enjoy the game more. Uh, first of all, of course, we, we've got to pick the queue up and uh, form a grip. And that's quite simple, really. There's a new, number of different grips that you can play uh, with the game, holding the cue for the game of snooker. But really, uh, when you're starting to play the game, it's easy just to pick the cue up off the table, like that, and that is your grip already formed. Well, after picking the cue up, as you can see, the um, line of my knuckles there is uh, parallel across there. Uh, the grip isn't too tight, and it isn't too slack, really. Um, it's when you start to bring the cue forward and backwards to hit the ball, uh, the line of the grip changes, which we'll come on to a bit later on. But uh, it's not too complicated thing, the grip of the cue, and it, must, it isn't something that really you must spend too much thought on, as long as it's not too, too firm and it's not too slack. 
Well, the next thing, of course, is the positioning of the feet, the legs, the body. Uh, the feet, the right foot is normally <coughs> more or less in line with the shot that you play in. Um, there's a fair spread between the two legs there, as you can see, but most professional players stand in different ways, uh, but all, all for the same reasons, and that is to get the left foot forward, bent here at the knee, which in turn takes you down into the shot and puts the weight forward into the stroke rather than back away from the shot. So if the feet are spread possibly 12 inches apart, the right foot is back, the right leg is very rigid, and the left leg of course is bent there at the knee which takes you into the shot. Now once you've formed that stance there, you've already got the grip. Of course the next thing is the positioning of the body in relation to the shot. So you go down and there's a slight twist then of the body which takes you down, puts your chin onto the cue, and as you can see I formed the bridge jant here and now you're ready to hit the ball. Now those are the main basic things for the, the stance to play the game of snooker. Forming the bridge of course is something that is very important together with the two feet because those three things form what we call the tripod in snooker and that's making you stand very solidly, no movement sideways, forward or back. You must stay still at all times in snooker. The only thing that moves, of course, is the cable coming back and forward. So the, the, the bridge hand, to form the bridge hand is quite simple really. Put your hand onto the table, flat, spread the fingers, then slowly bringing the fingers back up and keeping the tips of the fingers pressure onto the cloth and also at the back of the hand here, that must be touching the cloth at all times. So fingers spread, a bit of pressure on the front. So there you've got now some height so that you can put your cue in. Of course the only thing missing at the moment is what we call the V, and that's the thumb coming over to form the bridge there so that your cue can of course go into that position and that also forms uh, the line of sight similar to uh, when you're sighting with a rifle, that V you can think of it possibly as a sight in when you're firing a rifle. So that's the bridge hand, quite easy to form. Keep the fingers as spread as possible, of course the same as the feet. The idea is to be very solid with your hand on the table and of course your two feet on the floor so that when you go to deliver the cue, you at least your body is not going to move all over the place and hopefully then you'll hit the white ball very accurately. Right, now that we've formed the basic stance, we can now talk about trying to hit the, the white ball. Um, of course this takes what we call a cue action. So once you're into the basic stance, this time we're trying to hit the white ball up and down the spots as we call it, starting on the brown spot and taking the white over the blue, pink and black spot and hopefully back at the table in a straight line. It's a very good exercise. So here we go again with the stance, the feet, the bridge is formed, the tip into the middle of the white ball. Now then you're going to take the cue back now and forward into the white ball in a straight line, which is the most difficult thing to do, of course, in snooker. So as you can see, as my, my hand goes back, the cue comes back away from the ball to give me enough power to hit the ball. You can see that my, my, now my grip, the angle of the knuckles on the grip is changing. That is because if you keep your hand tight on the cue all the way through, the back hand will lift up in the air, and you must at all times in snooker try and keep the cue as parallel as possible to the bed of the table. So that gives you a straight, smooth hit through the ball. So as you come back, your hand opens slightly, the grip there opens slightly, and as you come forward into the white ball, of course, the hand then closes as it hits the ball. So we'll just try that shot, very slowly, back, forward, into the white, and hopefully the white will come back towards us. Well, if you can break that cue action down into different sections, uh, first of all, we'd uh, start off, of course, with the sighting, then we go on to the feathering, um, then we go on, of course, to the paws at the back 